blessings on this side of 2022. We thank God today that God is in the blessing business and we're starting up our Bible study again. And so we welcome you in to be a part, uh, to sit down in the word of God and reason with us as we get a greater understanding of God's word and we praying for one another and encouraging each other to push forward on this journey. And so I, I hope that you got your word. I hope you got your Bible. You got your mind, you got your pen and your paper and your pad, and you ready to go uh, into a brief study of the word of God with us. Also, we want to invite you uh, at seven o'clock uh, on Wednesdays um, at IAP. We have expository teaching uh, where we break the scripture down um, in verse by verse, and uh, we talk about it uh, amongst uh, one another, and we share in intimate time with one another. So we welcome you to come and be a part of that. And maybe God can inspire your knowledge in, to us and we can inspire knowledge from God into you. And we iron sharpens iron. And so tonight though, on, online, we continue to do our online Bible study for those that cannot make it into the sanctuary. But this, uh, in the sanctuary is a little bit different because we are able to communicate back and forth. And so, we welcome you to this time, and, and we are going to open up, just like many times before, with a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you, God, tonight. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you, God, for once again letting us see another year. God, we're asking, God, that you continue to guide our study tonight, that you move into it, God, that your will be done. Things will be said, God, that will bring about a knowledge and a desire to change in everyone that is listening life. So we thank you, God, for covering all of our churches. Thank you for the I'm a part of church family. All those who gather, God, those are studying and educating and learning more about your word. We ask that you continue to cover them. We also pray for this COVID situation. God, we ask you, God, that you continue to uh, let us feel your passion and your mercy on all of our lives. So God, we thank you and we give it up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so um, we're dealing with a hot topic. I want to start something new going into this 2022. So before I get into the meat of the lesson, I want to talk about deal with a hot topic. The hot topic that we're dealing with today, uh, one of the topics that uh, in the church and we know is a doctrinal term is justification. Justification. Uh, we're dealing with justification. Also, I'm going to deal with some other hot topics. Some things are going to be from a, a social <clears throat> Uh, aspect and maybe in a political aspect, uh, just to touch a little bit on it. So we got a hot topic, uh, justification. Therefore, since uh, we have been justified through faith, uh, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, five and one. Understand that our justification uh, <clears throat> is initiated, number one, by God. We find our peace through God, through the power of Christ, that we are justified with him. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, uh, for our sake, he made himself to be sin who knew no sin so that we may become the righteousness of God. And so Jesus paid it all on the cross to give us a right uh, to a, a eternal life as we dealt with the right and righteousness a, a few weeks ago. Uh, we, we are made in right standing with God through our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So justification. Justification makes one right with God. Uh, justification is God declaring. He's declaring those who receive Christ to be righteous in his sight based on the righteousness that has been imputed uh, to our accounts through Christ. We receive it from Christ. It's all about Jesus. Justification is simple as A, B, C, D. Justification is an act of God. It's nothing that we can do is what God has done for us. It's not described um, that, that we do anything other than believe and trust God for who he is. And in this process of justification, God is uh, inwardly renewing us and restoring us and changing us uh, as a person. He, he renews our mind. He restores us uh, to back to that birth process of godliness that he want us to have. Sin um, made us fall as a humanity, and therefore every flesh that comes 
into the world. Man born of a woman, we've, and we have sin in our lives. But God wants to restore us back to his original creation. And it, it takes a place and has a changed life as God changed us and, and makes us over for his kingdom. Um, I believe that Guy Water, that um, in the uh, Legion's uh, website, speaking to us and letting us know that God renews and changes. Uh, uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica um, defines justification as this in Christian theology. It's one, the act by which God moves a willing person from the state of sin and injustice to the state of grace, which is being just, just before God. Justice, grace, unmerited favor. The change in a person's condition uh, moving him or her from a state of sin uh, to a state of righteousness. So justification, justification uh, through the process of justification, what Jesus did for all of us, he paid our parole plan. Amen. He made our parole plan. He gave us a way out. God, it's not that we did not sin, not that we were not guilty, but he gave us a parole. Uh, he paid our bail. He set us free. And so we have, we have to be grateful for everything um, that God has done for us. Justification. Justification. And so continue to look up that word. I pray that this will just wet your whistle so that you won't get thirst more from the word of God and what justification uh, means into the life of every believer. And so as we move into the meat of the lesson, um, we talk about uh, this series this is part one. What makes grace so great? What makes grace so great? And I always uh, wondered that, uh, what makes grace so great? Uh, so we're going to talk about five points of it. The first point is grace is given to every person. Simple, simple, but profound. And we have to remember that grace is given to every person. That includes us. So no matter how we try to build ourselves up or try to make our, our, our own greatness. It's all because of the grace of God that we are who we are. It's God's grace and his mercy. God's grace, grace meaning unmerited favor. We couldn't earn it and we didn't deserve it. Grace to every person. Titus 2.11 says this, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all. So let me look at your word. Open up your word to go up. Second, uh, the Titus 2 and 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all. And so we thank God today that he opened up his grace for everybody. I thank God today that if you turn your life over, if you desire to follow Christ in a mighty way, you will receive that awesome grace. I just believe, as the Bible says, God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And God has appeared to all of us. So all we have to do is trust him and he can save our life to the animals. That's what makes grace so great. It's available to everyone. No matter who you are, no matter how low you've fallen, or how crazy the mistakes you made, God loves you. It's not about your status. It's not about your money. It's not about your color. It's about God's love. That's what makes grace so great. It's available for all of us. He wants everyone to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2, 3 through 4. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved, to come into the knowledge of the truth. 
And so we've got to believe God wants us. He wants us. So when we study the word of God, we pray to God. God was in part to us. His truth. He will enlighten our heart, enlighten our mind, so that we can walk the way that he's created us to walk. That's what makes, that's what makes grace so great. God doesn't lead us to our own devices and try to make us find our own way. He gives us a road map through his word. And if we open up the word, if we pray, if we study, God will reveal and continue to lead us into his path. That's what makes grace so great. Uh, Psalms 8411. Psalms 8411. If you need to pause the video to go to Psalms 8411, please do so. Psalms 8411. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. When we study his word and we um, purpose in our heart to walk the way God desires us to walk, to do our best to glorify him, to do our best to magnify his name in the land that we live in, no matter whether it be in, in, the, in your workplace, whether it be in your business, whether it be in your church or in your community, you're letting your light shine so for, so for God's glory. And when you're trying to do the best you can and you're doing it right, God says, he tells us that uh, he is our shield from the sun. From those things that will dry us out, tire us out. Those things that will make us give out. Burn out. God said, if you trust me, I will cover you. And I won't withhold no good thing from you. Isn't that good news that as long as you're in right standing, you're moving in right standing with God, you're trying to keep that relationship right with God, God will give you some good things in your life. Wow, I don't know about you. That's what makes grace so great. Malachi 4 and 2, Malachi 4 and 2, it says, Unto you that fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. He rise with healing in his wings for our life. Healing, not just, not only just physical healing, but spiritual healing, soul healing. Breaking the shackles and chains off our soul. Bandaging up the torn and ripped places. Covering. Blessing those places where we've been hurt and walked upon, stumbled and fallen upon. He nurses us back to hell. He had healing in his wings. And so that's, that's found because of God's grace. And that's, that's what makes grace so great. That God, his grace and mercy, gives us healing all over. Not only physically, he can do it mentally, he can do it spiritually. His healing in his wings. Not because we don't deserve it, but because his grace is so great on us. Jesus paid that price so that we one day could have eternal life. While we're here on earth, we can receive the good things of God and have God on our side. That what makes us, as a believer, we walk in grace and confession and trusting and praying and uplifting and praising, worshiping, glorifying God because we understand that he's able to work it all out for our good. Why does he do that? Because he loves us. And if you love God, realize the grace of God over your life that will make you, your love go deeper for him. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, I believe, I know, I wouldn't have made it. And I hope that you know it's by the grace of God. Grace grows 
It grows us so that we can overcome sin, guilt, setbacks in our life. That's what grace of God does. It grows us. When we understand we operate in grace, it begins to grow us for something phenomenal. Grows us and grooms us for what God has next and in store for our life. That's what makes grace so great. God holds us in his grace. He holds us in his love. And it's all by his amazing grace. As we close, Jesus is our grace factor. You know, there's a long-standing acronym uh, entitled GRACE. And it says, it's God's riches at Christ's expense. And tonight, I hope that you know that God's grace and mercy is covering us. And as we go through every trial, as we go through every test, I challenge you through the grace of God to put on the whole armor so that you can stand and withstand. God has forgiven you. Have you forgiven yourself? Have you forgiven others? Grace that gives us strength day to day to keep on following in God's way. To be a strong disciple for God, you got to know that his grace has covered you and is always available for you to bring you through whatever you find yourself into. God would do it for you. So that's why one thing that makes grace so great. So we thank you for being a part of our Bible study tonight. I hope that you take time and read the scriptures, pause the video, read the scriptures, uh, write down your own personal thoughts as God speaks to you on the different scriptures that we're giving. And also I want to also invite you to read a chapter from the book of Proverbs every week until you finish it. The Proverbs is the book of wisdom. So partner with us every week. This, this is week one. Uh, and so we're going to read Proverbs one. So move into it and so forth and so on until we read the entire book of Proverbs to help us to be stronger and wiser in 2022. God bless you and much love. Let me close with a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you, God, tonight. We pray that you continue to bless your people, God. Continue to let them take the scriptures tonight. Take the notes that came from the word of God tonight and go deeper in their study. Just let this be a guiding point for them as they studied in personal time, going deeper in your word. They need you, God. We need you. I need you on this journey to help us to move in grace tonight, to be able to see and to know that through the difficult times that your grace is there, it's available. Your favor is upon our life. Through it all, you're able to bring us over, out of, and through of, and help us to get over the things in our life that would have hindered us and harmed us. So God, we give you the glory tonight. Glad for your blessings all over this church, all over this house of God, the people of God, and all those who are viewing today. We ask that you have your way in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for another Bible study. Much love on our social distancing. We love you. God bless.